Welcome to Craft School and another crepe paper project. One of my favorite paper flowers to make is anything that can be on a blooming branch. So making these crepe paper magnolias today is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna show you how to make the bud, the smallest bloom, and then the large bloom. And adding these onto a branch with the leaves makes it look so realistic and beautiful. And it's simple to do. So let's get started. We're gonna start with three colors of crepe paper. We have the honeysuckle, white, and the cypress green, and these are from my extra fine crepe paper line, and you can find it in our tin pack, or you can also get them in individual packs. You'll need brown floral tape to match your branch. I have three quarter inch foam balls, 20 gauge wire, and for tools, I have a hot glue gun at low temperature, scissors, wire cutters to cut the wire shorter, and then I have these pens, and you can use any form of art marker. This one is actually an alcohol base, and this is a water base, and both of them work really well on the crepe paper. You'll also need a branch, and these are branches that we found after the winter storm on the sidewalk, and we gathered them up knowing that we would be making some gorgeous projects. The nice thing about this is it's dry and it's ready to use, so I know that the glue and the tape will stick to this and it's not going to dry out anymore. To prep the branch, I'm just going to clean off any of the really broken brittle pieces. I'll leave some of these because we will add some leaves to the end of these, but you can also remove some of them if you want to keep it a little bit more simple. It's up to you. If you're unable to find any branches um, in nature or in your backyard, you might even want to go over to the florist and see if they might have any that they can sell you. You'll find the magnolia branch pattern in a link under this video. Some things I want to point out, you'll see these little lines that say grain, and this is really important that you follow the grain of the paper. You can see the paper has uh, sort of these lines, and this is how it stretches, and this is what we call grain. And if you actually cut the petal out sideways, it just won't look the same. It won't hold the same body. So make sure you follow the grain. Also, note that we have how many petals to cut for each flower. So this one in particular is cut eight, where this one here says cut four. So you wanna take note of these two things when you're cutting out your crepe paper petals. So I'm gonna start with the largest bloom. And this one is asking for eight white petals. And then we'll have one center piece. This is a circle and then one fringe. And we have the smaller sepal. The larger one's for the buds, so we wanna make sure and use the smaller one. And this will be cut out in the green. The way that I cut out patterns is I'll lay it onto the crepe paper and just cut the whole length, about the width of that pattern. You can follow the grain lines with this. That makes it really easy. And then I'll just cross cut. So there's two. So it looks like we can get about five petals per length. And with this extra fine crepe paper, it's really easy to cut multiple layers and this will save you a lot of time. You have some good scissors that are sharp I really like this Fiskars brand, and just cut around the pattern. I like efficiency, especially when I'm doing a big project. So there's five, and I'll go ahead and cut out another strip. Since I'm making multiple flowers for this project, I'll just do the whole length, and then save that for the next bloom that I do. The center and the fringe are cut out of the honeysuckle, and the center does not have any grain line. It doesn't matter which direction you cut it out because it is a circle. And remember, these patterns are guides. You don't have to be perfectly exact. For the fringe piece, it's really important that you do follow the grain line, and I'll show you why. So grain line, grain, it's sort of an awkward cut because it's just on the edge there. And I'll trim that out. And now I'm going to use my scissors to fringe it. Before I do that, I'll give it just a little bit of stretch so that I lengthen it. And then use my scissors to very finely create these little tiny eyelashes. And I think it's 
if you can practice a bit and make them closer together so they're finer, this looks a little more natural. So your fringe should look something like this when you're done. The last piece for this flower is the sepal, and we'll cut that out of green. And it says right here, cut four. I can measure and then cut a strip. And since I'll be making a lot of flowers, I'll need the whole thing. And I'll save the whole strip for later, but right now I just need four pieces. So, cut the width, and you can cut all four of those at once. Let's assemble our flower, and I'll start by pulling out a wire. Now, I'm not going to need the whole thing. I'll go ahead and cut it in half. So, I think we're looking at about what is this? About eight inches. This is about an eight inch wire. I'll save that for another flower and I'll use the point here of my tool to go ahead and bend this down and I like to do this because it gives more surface for the ball to stay on oftentimes this wire doesn't really hold very well now here's my three-quarter inch ball and I'll use my tool to go ahead and start a hole just a little bit and then when I put my hot glue onto the wire I put a nice little dab there, pushing it in when it's still hot, that will give it a bit of a melt so that it will go even further than my pre-made hole. And once that is cool, that should hold really well. I'll add it a little bit more just in case. So I'll take my centerpiece and give it a little bit of stretch in the middle. Now it's not quite a circle, but pretty close. And put some glue right around the edge of the top and place that on. Now we're only going to see the top of the center, so we're not going to need to wrap the whole ball. The next step will be adding in the fringe. I'm going to start with a bit of glue right on the edge of my first uh, crepe paper piece and then very gently just lay that right on top of that glue and add more as I go. And the fringe should make it twice around the ball. So I'm going to set that aside and let it cool. And the next step is we're going to paint our petals. So I'll need eight petals for this bloom. Here's eight. And I've picked this really pale pink pen and it has um, an alcohol base. And what's most important, you can also use water base. This one's alcohol, but what's most important is this beautiful tip, which is almost like a paintbrush. It has a bit of a bend to it. It's not very stiff. And I like to do this on my silicone mat, so I'll move this over. And one petal at a time, using that end, you can see it has two ends. We don't want to use that end. We want to use this one. I'll hold it with one finger, and then with the other hand, just gently brush upward. You can see how it's making this beautiful ombre effect. And because it's alcohol base, it actually seeps through to the other side. So you only have to paint one side of each petal. The next step is to stretch the petals just a little bit to give them some shape. And I'll use my thumbs at the base right where the curve starts to form this petal and gently, gently stretch it. And I'm acting as if this is a very delicate clay, forming it in between my fingers. That's the best way to think of this. And for these petals, we don't want a lot of stretch. We want to keep them you know, fairly flat, but just to give them that natural curve. And I really love using this extra fine crepe paper for this particular flower because it does have that delicateness that you might see in a spring bloom. So I have my center and I'll run a line of glue just on the stem part of each petal. And I'm going to start with four. So think of arranging them in fours. I'll place it pretty far down on my wire all of this will be covered with tape. So think of fours and you'll want to keep them pretty even. You want to make somewhat of a square. If you want to, you can do two and two across from each other and then turn and do two and two again. And as I'm adding these petals on, you notice there's still some of this foam ball showing. That's easy to fix. Just add a bit of glue right there and then form that inner petal up onto the side of the center. And then we'll do that with two more. If you want to be efficient, go ahead and put that extra glue up on the top of where it curves. And then that way you can place it right onto the foam ball. 
and then the next four petals will place right between the first four and that will create the full bloom. I'm going to make sure as I'm working that I'm pinching all of these layers down tightly so we have a rounder shape. It tends to want to be flat. So there's our eight petals right there. And one of the things when you're putting this branch together, you'll want to make some of your blooms closer in so they don't look quite as bloomed. And some of them open. That's just the process, you know, of the flower branch blooming. It goes from bud to this full, beautiful bloom. And I think having some variety on your branch just really adds to the texture and to the, the realisticness of this. I also like to put my finger inside it on the fringe and just ruffle it up a little bit. so. It doesn't look quite so even. So the bloom is done. Let's finish it off with the sepal. If you want to add a little bit more realism to the sepal, you can put on some brown into the green because what's going to happen is the green sepal will blend right into the brown branch and I think it gives a really nice transition. So this pin is actually a water-based pin. It also works really well. It has a beautiful point to tip like a paintbrush and it matches the branch as close as possible as well as the tape so there's a beautiful transition from the real wood into the paper flower itself. And we'll use the same technique where I start at the bottom and just quickly paint upward to give it that ombre effect. Once I've painted upwards, I'm going downwards and making for sure the base of this is really solid brown. And you'll notice with these water base is they don't go all the way through the paper quite as easily. You can see it seeping through a little bit, but not as much. So that's the difference between water base and alcohol base. They're both great. And now I'll glue these right at the bottom of my bloom. Put some glue on the other side that's not painted. And then place them, I don't know, about halfway up the actual pink section so that they wrap up nicely around the flower. And there's only four of them. So you'll want to place them side by side to make sure that you get all the way around the flower. And you can see how that's finished. And now it's time to finish it off with the brown floral tape. I'll just start right at the bottom where everything curves down and gently stretch and activate it with the heat of my fingers. It's really important to stretch this floral tape because if you don't, it will fall off. And gently working down the stem at a slight angle. Remember, if your tape breaks or something happens, you can just go right back over it. And now it's ready to attach to the branch. For your open bud, you'll need four of these petals, and this is a different shape where it's pointier on the top and it's smaller. I've gone ahead and painted those. I need four of my small sepals and one center, and I've already prepared the ball on my wire. So same process where we'll stretch this out and place it right on the top of my foam ball. Now for the partially open bloom, I'm not going to do the center fringe, but instead put the flower petals right on. And before I do that, I'll stretch them out just a little bit right in the center, kind of an elongated stretch. I'm going to put glue on about the bottom third of the petals, so a little bit higher here, all the way down. Place that onto the wire, and then wrap that petal up around my ball. You'll want to make sure all your foam is covered. And then I'll wrap this around the wire so it gets it out of the way. There's only four petals, so I'm going to rotate around, making sure that they're fairly even. We'll have some overlap there. And I'm making it really tight at the base underneath the foam ball. My petals are still a little bit loose and I want them to be really snug around the base. So to do that, I'll just add some glue inside and then just using my fingers, press them in rotation. Okay. 
and then we'll add our sepal. Very similar is what I did on the large bloom where I'm gluing it halfway up the pink stem because we want to make sure and cover all of the area with the green so it looks like a full wrap. There's your second bloom and now we'll make the closed bud. We'll have the same ball and wire set up. We have four of the larger sepals and then a round green piece and we're gonna assemble it very similar to the last two. Stretch that out a little bit, add the glue, and for the sepal pieces, we'll want to get a lot of stretch right down here at the base. So very gently pull that out as about as far as you can, right in the center and then no stretch on the very sides because you want it to come back around. Then we'll add some glue and you'll really want to get this to wrap around that ball. So I'll start by placing it onto my stem and then if I need to I can go back here, add just a little bit of glue and then wrapping that around really tightly. And I'll do that four times. And then we'll finish it with floral tape. Once you have all of your flowers and buds done, you'll want to cut the leaves. And you can see here, I have two different sizes of leaves. Again, make sure you follow the grain line. And to prepare the leaves for the branch, you just simply give them a stretch. And I think the fun part about preparing the leaves is you can stretch them in different ways. You want them to have a lot of variety. So just kind of play with it. So there's several ways that you can attach your buds to your branch. And one of the ways is you can cluster a few together, wrap them up, and then add them onto one of your branches. Or you can go in and singly do one at a time. And I'll show you that method first. So I'm gonna just break off a few of my little buds here. And I'll take the wire and just simply wrap this around my branch. Kind of make sure that it's going in the same direction. And then to cover up the wrap, I'll just take some of my floral tape and make sure that there's a really smooth merge. And remember as you're wrapping on your wire or your floral tape, you'll wanna make sure to stretch it so it will stay and it won't fall off. I think it looks really nice to go ahead and cover every place that you've wrapped with some uh, floral tape because then that will cover up the wire. It'll look, make it look a little bit more realistic. So here I am at the end of my wire and I'll just finish that off and give it some pinch so it looks like it's really nice and flat. Then if you want to cover up any of this mechanical, you can bring in some of your leaves and I just glue these on very simply. Several different ways you can do it. You can wrap it around some of the twig and just pinch it. Now remember that hot glue doesn't really stick to floral tape, so you'll want to make sure if you do a leaf on some floral tape, you'll want to do two and then place them across from each other so that they can hold on to the actual paper itself. So that one I've wrapped it onto the base, but I've used two leaves so that we don't have anything sliding off the floral tape itself. And I like to do the leaves last because I wanna see where all of my flowers are and then I'll use this to cover up my mechanics and to add some bits and pieces where I feel like it needs that extra green. So I might wanna add a, a leaf here. And since I'm wrapping it onto uh, this floral wire, I'm going to bring it around to itself so that I'm gluing paper onto paper. And then you can just continue adding first your flowers. Sometimes start with your big flowers and then move to the smallest ones and then your leaves. And when you're done, you'll have something that looks just like this. Once you've created all of your buds and blooms and flowers, I think this project is really quite simple, especially when you use this found uh, twig that's already you know there for you. But th something to keep in mind when you're creating this is to try to follow the flow of the branch itself and just watch how the branches move and keep your flowers, blooms, and leaves going in that direction. And I think that's what makes it look so realistic. 
Be sure and share all of your crafty projects with us by using the hashtag Leah Griffith and make sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the red button below.